Hey art friends, welcome to the Curio Art Studio. Curio is an art gallery and studio space located on the main street of Zillianople next to the Strand. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to create an awesome masterpiece inspired by the local artist, Keith Herring. Keith Herring was actually born in Coonstown, Pennsylvania and really well known for his graphic art style and his simple drawings that he produced by the hundreds. And we actually have a really cool book we're gonna to read today that talks a little bit more about his life, what he's known for, and the effect that he had on his community. So get your art supplies ready and we're gonna do a really sweet project today on Curio Creates. Here's what we will be using today to make our art project. Remember, use what you have at home. It's okay if you don't have the same things that we do. Once you have all your supplies, let's get started. I'm working on a white piece of drawing paper today. I'm going to begin by using a pencil and eraser so that if I make any mistakes along the way, I can erase it. And the first thing I'm going to start with is actually a circle magnet that I found. I'm going to be beginning by drawing two circles and I always find it easier to trace them instead of drawing them. Now these are going to be the heads for my people that are working on holding up a heart. Keith Herring's people were very simplified. You don't have to worry about faces, hair, even fingers and toes and clothing. He just draws these really simple outline shapes of people. We're gonna have two people today with a heart, but then once you learn how to draw it, you can switch it up and do many different variations of the same thing. So now that we know what kind of image we're going to be working on, these are going to be our heads. So I'm going to take these and instead of putting them in the middle, I'm gonna shift it low. And I'm gonna go a little bit to the left and then I'll be going later on a little bit to the right. So this is going to be my head. I'm gonna hold it down nice and tight and I'm going to hold my pencil up and down because when I do that, it doesn't fall this way and slip underneath what I'm using to trace with. When I hold my pencil, nice and up and down, it goes beside what I'm tracing instead of slipping underneath it. So this is my first circle for my head. And then I wanna make one over here. I'm gonna leave almost my whole hand of space in between. And I'm gonna put that down, trace it all the way around. And again, if you don't have something to trace, you're more than welcome to draw it. This is just something I like to do to make it a little easier to have the same shape over and over. Now that we have our heads, we're gonna make our first set of arms and our arms are going to be working together to hold this heart. One thing that Keith Haring really wanted to make apparent in his drawings and paintings was the idea of community. He loved the idea of doing things to bring people together, to make people know that they can treat each other as equals and be respectful. So this picture isn't just about, you know, love and a heart for Valentine's Day, but it's the idea of people coming together to help and to be kind and to make a better community. So these people's arms are going to be kind of lifting together or kind of like have a, a shape that looks kind of like an L or a shape like you're like strong. So we're gonna make kind of an angled shape whenever we're working on our arm. What we'll be doing is we're gonna go low. We don't want it to look like our arm is sticking out of our head. So we wanna shift our line low and we're going to come out straight, and then we're gonna be going up like this. So it's kind of like a corner, like we were starting to make a rectangle or a square or kind of a backwards L. And this would be a little too skinny if we were making it our arm. So we wanna add some thickness to it. So what we're gonna do, instead of drawing individual fingers, we're going to kind of make it look like this by drawing this kind of not quite rainbow, not quite full circle shape. It's gonna be kind of this rounded circle similar to our head, but we're not going to attach it back because we wanna make a thickness to it. So we're going to bring this line down, making these two lines parallel. Parallel means that these two lines will never ever touch. They have the same amount of distance in between them. There's the same thickness. So we're gonna bring this down, this now, creates our hand and forearm, kind of like this, or like this. 
And now we're going to bring it down a little more to create the bend in our elbow. And then we'll continue it more towards the body. This would be bicep on top and then tricep right here underneath. Before we go all the way over, we're gonna stop because we need to also make a thickness for the body. So we're gonna turn one more time and we're gonna bring this down so that this makes his body, and this would be his armpit right there. So you have one person kind of lifting their arm up high or kind of looking like they're helping to hold the heart. We're gonna do the same thing on this side and it's okay if it's not exactly the same. We're gonna start low, we're gonna bring that line out. We're gonna go up like this, could be as high, could be a little shorter. I'm gonna do this a little shorter. I'm gonna start my round shape and I'm actually so close, I'm gonna bump against my other arm and I'm going to stop and make it look like it's going behind it like this. And then I'm gonna come out the other side so it looks like, kind of like you have them behind each other, something kind of like this, like they're helping. Bringing this all the way down to make our forearm. And then we'll be going back towards the tricep, armpit area, then a body. And you can see that sometimes in an example I did already, these have some space between them. So it's okay if they're close together, if they're overlapped, if they're touching, you know, this is your own project. So however you choose to make those arms is fine. The other side of our body, we can be a little bit more free with and have a little bit more fun. I'm gonna do something similar, but a little bit more of like a pose that's a little bit upwards. So I'm going to be doing something that's kind of like he's helping holding with this hand, and then this one's gonna be up a little bit more like this, like, yeah, I'm helping. So when I'm working on this next part, this is going to be a little bit higher. Instead of going out straight, I'm gonna go up a little bit more and I'm gonna bend a little taller so it makes my arm go a little higher. Remember, we can't leave it that skinny. We want some thickness to it. So we're gonna do that round kind of circle rainbow shape and we're gonna come down and make those parallel lines so it's a little thicker and then finish off our body. So this would be my one person. And then this one, I'm gonna make it just going straight out. So I'm gonna make this going up real high and then a rounded part and back down like this. So I'm gonna make this arm like this. His arm is just extended nice and tall and then making the body like that. One thing I'm going to erase is whenever I do trace over this, I'm not going to add that extra line down at the bottom because I wanna make it look like the head and the body are just attached together. I don't wanna make it look like it has an overlapping to it. So we're gonna do something similar, but not quite all the way finish the head off like that. Now it's time to do the heart. We want the heart to be really, really big. It is the main focus. So we're gonna make sure that we draw really large for this part. One thing I wanna to talk to you about is your heart is probably not going to be exactly the same on both sides. You know, if you take a look at this heart, it's not perfect and that's okay because art's not meant to be perfect. We can still see and read that this is a heart even though it's not exactly the same on both sides. That's fine. So as we're drawing it, if it's a little wonky or a little crooked, that's fine. It's great. It adds excitement to the picture. What we're going to do is we're going to start by giving ourselves a couple little guidelines. I'm going to put a dot at the bottom because that's where I want my bottom of the heart to be. And then I'm also gonna put a dot up here near the top because this is where the middle of my heart's going to be. So what I'm doing is I'm actually giving myself little guidelines of like a dot at the top for where this is and a dot at the bottom down here. Now, if you have some younger artists, you could always draw it lightly with dots so that they can follow along with your dots as a guide. You could also do an old school throwback where you fold your piece of paper, you draw half of your heart, cut it out and open it, and you have that pattern too. You could show your artist how to make a pattern like that, and they could use it over and over again. But we're just gonna freehand our heart today. We're gonna start with the bottom instead of the top, and we're gonna make this more of a V. So we're gonna start here at our point, and we're gonna make this go up, but we wanna be careful because we don't wanna draw over top of the people we created. So we wanna stop, and continue out the other side. Anywhere that you're gonna bump into your person, you stop and let it continue on the other side. That gives it the illusion and the idea 
that it is behind them. So we're gonna do our big V first, and then we're gonna come here at the top, and this is where we're gonna make kind of this rainbow kind of circle shape. Not quite a circle, you know, more like a long rainbow. This kind of looks like a candy cane almost. And those guidelines are helping us to make it really big and have somewhere to kind of follow as we go. So awesome, I'm super happy with that. You know, I could make this a little skinnier to match the other side, but I'm just gonna keep going. There's no point in trying to make it perfect. It gives the feeling of what I'm trying to accomplish. So that's all we need. I'm going to trace mine next. I'm going to use a Sharpie. You could use a black crayon to trace. You could also use a black oil pastel that we learned about in our last episode of Curio Creates with the polar bears too, if you wanted to. Now, sometimes people ask me, why do I always like to have things traced and have a bold black outline? And the reason why I like to do that is because it adds contrast. When I'm looking at something from across the room, I like to be able to see what it is from further away. So I like those bold lines. It kind of helps me to know what I'm seeing and it helps all of the hard work that I was working on stand out to the viewer. If we didn't have these lines, your picture would be awesome too, but these ones just make it a little bit more kind of graphic. It makes it a little bit more, like I said, contrasting your dark black against the light white, make it really bold and stand out and pop. It gives it kind of that cartoon look to it where it's simplified, but it really stands out. This is a great thing to practice with younger artists too, their eye-hand coordination of trying to get their hand to follow a line that's already there is great practice for them. When we took a look at my sweatshirt before, one thing you might have noticed were all of these lines, and these are movement lines. These two kind of lines on the side help to make the body look like it's kind of moving. If those weren't there, like this is, they just look kind of stale. They're just standing there. But if we start to add these lines that show movement and these lines around the heart that show that there's you know, an excitement, that there's an energy to it, it makes it more exciting to look at. So we're gonna go ahead and draw those lines. It doesn't have to be anything tricky. Some of them you might not be able to draw because they get cut off a little bit, but I'm gonna start here on the side and I'm gonna draw some lines a little bit longer, some a little bit shorter, and I'm actually going to turn my paper as I go, and that will help it give the idea that it is bursting. That'll help make the kind of radiating lines where it looks like they all start from the middle and burst out. So that'll make it a little easier to make that even. This is the same thing you can do, like if you're drawing petals on a flower or something, you can kind of spin your paper to help keep you on track of getting them to go in the direction you want. You can have as many or as few as you want. And the last step for me with my Sharpie that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take some of these and I'm going to make them a little bit wider. We have a lot of really interesting lines, but I'm gonna take these and make a little bit more of a thickness to them. Just like our lines added excitement to our picture, the weight of these lines being different also add a lot of excitement and interest to our picture as well. We're varying the line weight, which means that instead of your eye being like, oh yeah, everything's the same, it's giving your eye something else to look at to make it stay on the picture for a little bit longer and just really take in kind of all of the extras. Now inside our heart, when we do add color to it, we could make it really colorful. We could keep it simplified. One thing I'd like to do though, is to draw a rainbow up in this corner and I'm going to flatten this side and then make it come back together. I'm actually making a highlight. This highlight is on tons of different things. It's the idea that there is light shining down and this is the brightest part of the light. So it's extra, extra light right there to show that that's where the light's hitting and it's really nice and bright. Now that we have all of our drawing done, we're gonna start to color, and this is really where you can be super creative. One thing I'm using today is chalk pastel. 
It's not really something that tons of people have at home, so I'm going to use it today to show you some examples. But again, this is for you to do your masterpiece with at home. So you can use crayon, markers, pencils. You know, if you decide at this point that you don't want to make it a drawing and you do want to make it a painting, you can absolutely switch to something like that instead. So this is called a chalk pastel. This pastel is real chalky, like sidewalk chalk. These pastels um, that we have used, we used these oil pastels last time on Curio Creates. These are a little bit more of a combination between crayon and lipstick. Being that it's called an oil pastel, it has oil in it and it's a little bit more of a creamy texture. This is very chalky. Chalk pastels can be considered a little messy. They do kind of give off this little powder, just like sidewalk chalk. Some people really enjoy that because they'll use it later on, just like I will, so I'll show you that. Some people also really like chalk pastels because you can blend with them. Um, like my daughter Ayla, this was her example. She kind of blended her colors together with chalk pastels. So I'm going to color with these and kind of leave this having some little areas of white in between because I'm going to go back in and kind of smear that together later on. Now that I'm done, I'm actually going to take my finger and you can tell that these are kind of messy, but I'm gonna take my finger and I'm going to take some of this extra loose powder that's around and I'm going to push that extra powder into my paper and that's going to kind of cover those little areas that I didn't color in super dark and it's also going to create more of a soft look on my heart. I want to be careful as I go around my body, my arms and legs and head. I want to be careful not to accidentally go into that. I'm going to be careful not to go into my highlights. And you can see that that just makes a really nice, more solid image. Now, I'm sure you're noticing that I still have lots of extra powder and I'm going to use that to my advantage. Remember when I said that we use these black oil pastels for our polar bear on Curio Creates? If you did this project, we used our black oil pastel and we smeared it to make it look like our polar bear fur. So I'm actually going to take my red and I'm going to smear it in these empty spots on the outside of my picture just to give it a little bit more excitement. So I'm going to kind of wiggle my finger back in here and get that extra dust and I'm going to pull my finger starting at the heart. I'm going to pull it up in a way. And this is just going to add some extra color to the outside and just kind of bring it back into being really simple, but having a lot of energy with these lines that are kind of popping out. As I'm finishing putting all of these lines around the heart, let's check out that really cool book I wanted to read to you that talks about Keith Haring as a little boy. Keith Haring, the boy who just kept drawing. It's written by K.A. Haring, who's actually Keith Haring's younger sister, and it's illustrated by Robert Newbecker, who lived in New York City around the same time as Keith Haring. Keith Haring, the boy who just kept drawing. There was a boy named Keith. When he was little, his father taught him how to draw dogs and fish and funny things. His dad would draw a line, then Keith would draw one. Soon, the whole page would be full. From that time on, Keith never stopped drawing. In elementary school, while taking tests, Keith doodled on the edge of his paper. When he handed in his work, his teacher would ask, why did you doodle on this important paper? Keith didn't answer. He went back to his desk and just kept drawing. Sometimes Keith invited his friends to draw in his backyard clubhouse. Keith made symbols and said each one represented a letter of the alphabet. His friends asked, why do you use symbols to write? Keith drew more symbols. It was his way of answering their question. He encouraged his friends to join him. As a teenager, Keith liked to draw in his bedroom with music playing loud. He would draw on every piece of paper he could find. His mother had to yell over the music, why can't you turn that music down and go outside to ride your bike? But Keith had sold his bike to buy art supplies. So he answered, look at the cool drawings I did. 
and he just kept drawing. When Keith was in high school, he won first prize for his art. A successful couple from town offered to buy his drawing. Keith said, no thank you. If you enjoy my art, you may hang it on your wall, no charge. Keith's sisters were shocked. Why didn't you take the money, they asked. Keith shrugged. He just wanted to keep drawing. Keith graduated from high school and went to the big city of Pittsburgh to a school that would teach him about art. There were boys on the street trying something new, break dancing. He liked the crazy shapes of their bodies as they turned and flipped on the ground. While the music played loud, Keith started drawing wiggly lines. His teachers asked him, why are you drawing pictures that look like scrambled bodies? This is not what we told you to draw. Keith knew how to draw. He just wanted to draw in different ways and he kept drawing. Keith moved to the huge city of New York when he was 20 so he could draw with other artists. He started to draw all over the city, on walls, on sidewalks, and on paper that hung on lampposts. His drawings were washed away by the rain and torn down by street cleaners. Other artists asked Keith, why do you draw in places where your pictures are erased? Keith didn't hear them. He was searching for another wall so he could keep drawing. Keith got a job delivering packages and sometimes rode the subway. One day he saw a panel of black paper on the wall in a station. He rushed outside to buy chalk and came back and began to draw. The white chalk made bright smooth lines on the black paper. Day after day Keith filled the empty panels in the subway stations with art. Soon people who rode the subway were looking for the white chalk drawings. No one knew the name of the artist, but his drawings were easy to recognize. People asked him, why are you drawing here? What do your pictures mean? Keith said, what do you see? You decide what they mean. Where Keith lived, there was trash on the street and people didn't always say hello to each other. One day he and his friends cleaned up 20 bags of garbage in front of a long wall. Then, Keith painted square faces with smiles and body shapes dancing upside down. The neighbors liked the drawings, and they stopped to say thank you. A policeman came by and lectured Keith. Why did you do this? I have to give you a ticket because you didn't get permission. Keith paid the fine and just kept drawing. Soon, people wanted to see more of Keith's drawings, and he was asked to display his work in an art gallery. Art was hung from floor to ceiling, and in between he painted on the walls. Keith invited everyone to come and enjoy his work. All of Keith's artwork sold, and the gallery owner asked him, what are you going to do with all this money? Keith said, I read in the newspaper that there are kids who don't have enough to eat. I didn't have this money yesterday, and I was happy. If I don't have it tomorrow, I'll still be happy. All children need to eat. I'll send the money to them. The gallery owner gasped, why? Keith just smiled and started to draw again. Now people were inviting Keith to draw in famous museums and exhibit in galleries all over the world. He was proud that he had become a successful artist, but wherever he went, Keith insisted he paint a mural so everyone could enjoy his work, not just the people who had money to buy it. During a visit to Paris, France, Keith painted on the outside of a children's hospital six stories high. Newspaper reporters came to take pictures and asked, why did you paint at the hospital? Do you think it'll make sick children feel better? Keith didn't have time to answer. He had to finish the painting. When the Statue of Liberty was 100 years old, Keith drew an outline of the famous statue on a huge piece of vinyl fabric. Then he asked 900 kids to help him finish the drawing. Keith told them, draw anything, whatever you want. No one can say it's good or bad. It's yours. When the giant painting was displayed, people were amazed to see what Keith and the kids had made but the art critics couldn't understand why a famous artist was drawing with kids. But you know Keith, he just kept drawing. 
Keith painted all over the world. He would draw on anything, anytime, anywhere. Wherever he went and whatever he did, he would not stop. He just kept drawing. Now everyone wanted to know, and together they shouted, Why? Why do you draw all the time? Why do you give your artwork away? Why do you draw on buildings, on people, on clothing, on furniture, on subway walls, on cars, on skateboards, on walls that belong to no one, and on things to be thrown away? Why do you draw on everything? Keith stopped drawing just for a moment and answered, I draw all the time because there are many spaces to fill. I give my drawings away to help make the world a better place. I draw everywhere because everyone needs art. Then Keith turned back to the street, took a piece of chalk from his pocket, and just kept drawing. What an awesome story about Keith Haring's life. These next two pages talk a little bit more about what Keith was like as a child, and then it talks a little bit more about Keith Haring's career. And if you want to know any more information about Keith Haring, you can always visit HaringKids.com. I finished doing all of my extra chalk around the outside. You'll notice that it is a pretty messy art supply, but that's also why it's so fun. Here's what you can do with that extra powder that accumulated on your picture. What we're going to do is we're going to just find our closest garbage can, which I'll just kind of pull this extra paper back out that I was using. And you're going to tap this into the garbage or onto an extra piece of paper. What you don't want to do is take it and smear it because then it'll go everywhere. Oh, and I just noticed that I got a fingerprint on the outside that I didn't really want there. So I can actually take my eraser to it and help to erase any of those extra little fingerprints that get in the way. Maybe you're gonna use your fingerprints around the outside to make a really cool design. That's always an option too. Again, I know that you're using art supplies that you have at home, so a lot of you probably did something really different than me, but you can do as much or as little as you want with your project. I'm going to consider mine done. Um, I think it's really simple and I'm gonna leave it that way. One thing you could include is a border if you want to, or like I said, another thing you could think about doing is actually coloring your people in like my daughter Ayla did. And I like that she even added the hearts that they're working together to create that heart and that sense of community. How awesome is that? Thank you so much for taking the time to make art with me today. I really enjoyed learning about Keith Herring, making an awesome masterpiece with you. And I really look forward to the next time that we create art again on Curio Creates. Check out these artists in action making the same project you are at the Curio Art Studio on Main Street of Zillianople. Feel free whenever you're done to ask a grown-up if it's okay that they take a picture of you and upload it to social media. Tag us at CurioCool on Facebook or Instagram so we can see the sweet project that you worked on today. If you would like to have more content or always be in the know of something cool that's happening at Curio, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and our website at curiocool.com. This will keep you updated with any new classes, events, videos, kits, art supplies, art shows, and more.